for doors. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. This is the thing. I got myself a speaker badge, which is perfectly fine. Now the the challenge is, I got two bags here, and these bags need to be secured. There's no way, there's no room that I can secure my bags. So going in and out and filming, that's going to be a challenge for the next two days. Let's see where we can leave my stuff. Actually, I missed you in uh, in the UK. Yes, I didn't come to Babco <laughs> this year. Yeah, I don't usually get over to that one, but uh, I'll be over in. You're gonna be in Hong Kong, aren't you? For the... I'll be in Hong Kong. Yeah. You'll be at the booth. I'll be. Well, I'll be wandering around. I'm sure, as usual. Catch up with you later. Yeah, okay. See you. Bye. Bye. So there is a person who is not easily to catch for an interview uh, because he travels a lot, he's everywhere, he has a lot of meetings, but I finally got Paul Steinberg here to talk to. Paul, thank you very much for talking to me. Uh, one of the things that, that I found over the last, last years actually is that Motorola is really diving into this um, the, the, the cup of the future thing, that type of thing, right? Yep. Technology, software applications. Um, and you started with that a long time ago, but actively promoting that over the last two years, maybe. Yep. So right. what is the status right now? So uh, how happy are you What what you guys have been doing right now? Yeah, so first of all, I mean, we're thrilled to be a key, a key partner with AT&T and the, the FirstNet Nationwide Public Safety Broadband Network in the U.S., and it really is where a lot of the, the points that you're making here come together. The way we see the future unfolding is one from not just mission-critical communication, but also now mission-critical intelligence. So layering in what we've done for 90 years, uh, now adding that intelligence layer on top of it. So it's all these things such as mobilized applications that provide mapping and messaging and whiteboarding and and uh, and peer-to-peer -peer video, ways for people to communicate in ways and, and interact and collaborate in ways they never could in the past. Uh, so that's a key part of the equation. Uh, the other part is is the proliferation of all the data now. We can get data from the edge, from things and from people like we never could before That's right. in real time. So bringing that back and then actually applying analytics to actually extract that intelligence from it. So what we've done at Motorola is we've taken a big focus on user experience design and customer research. Blending all these ingredients, it's like this massively complex canvas with a rich palette of colors to paint that user experience for end users on. So doing that with efficacy and with care. So we put a lot of emphasis on user experience design. Uh, the other component we brought in is data science. Uh, the ability to extract from all of that data meaningful intelligence and then delivering it to the right person at the right time. So that strategy was already being, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find the words. Um, Developed. Incubated that's, along the yeah, way. That yeah, that strategy was already incubated a long time ago, right? That's right. Have you, in the meantime, changed your strategy a little bit? Or because, you know, during the time that you're um, uh, selling those solutions, you might think about new types of things or going a different direction? Yeah, so I think you're exactly right. So the foundation of what we will, will provide to FirstNet, what we're providing in the United Kingdom at the, uh, the home office network there, ESMCP network, is really push, mission critical push to talk over LTE. Uh, our Wave 7000 product family, interworking with LMR, Land Mobile Radio, the venerable technology that's there so that we merge talk groups, we get features that collaboratively work across both technologies. Uh, layering on top of that the ability to manage grouping and quality of service, those sorts of things uh, that Wave, 7, Wave 7000 depends upon. That was work we were doing three, four, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really gratifying to see it now come to fruition. We're actually seeing that materialize in, in the work there. So as you said, we're now leaning further forward. Uh, so that platform in place gives us a tremendous foundation to build upon the future experiences. So more around data analytics, more around uh, video, artificial intelligence, uh, the ability for people to have a natural language conversation with technology. Uh, think of, think of, uh, think of like Siri for, for first responders and mobile computing environments. So yeah, we're, we're working in those areas now, Kurt.
So big changes then within the company, moving, going from a box moving company, right, many, many years ago, to a technology company on all fronts, on all sides, still focusing on public safety or that's the major part, right? Yeah, so definitely. So I, the way I like to think of it is mission critical, business critical intelligence. So mobile field workers, uh, think of like petrochem, mining, manufacturing, hospitality. Those are all really important environments to mobilize intelligence in. Certainly public safety, governments, and ministries of defense are important as well. So the focus blends across all of those very accretively. So that's powerful, but you're right. The, the strategy of the company is evolving. So technology that delivers communication reliably and devices is still very, very important. But now what we're adding to that is a decided software and an as-a-service focus. So our professional services arm of the company have grown dramatically to deliver this functionality that we're talking about, as well as our software efficacy to develop and deliver software applications and services in this environment that we're chatting about. I'm looking forward to see in the next two years, actually, what has happened and how your company has changed the direction, because that's going to be very interesting, actually. Yeah, I think, thank you for that. I think so, too. It's really in a very interesting world we're in. It's always interesting. I like to tell people I have the best job in the world because I get to fuse together technology, which is my passion, and deliver capabilities to users that have a really impactful purpose. So helping people be their best in the moments that matter. So I think this journey we've been on is very gratifying to see where we are, but it's just the beginning, as you say, and there's so much more that will come, and it's very, very exciting. Okay. With those new technologies, what are you doing on Cybercrime? How do you make your systems secure and safe? Yeah, it's a great question, Gerd, and that is that is where the, the frontier has evolved to, that, you know, in the past with communication, the way we delivered it, it was, um, it was a safer world. It was really largely a self-contained system that we could perimeter secure. Now in the world that we're talking about, almost everything is virtual. The network is actually shared. Uh, the devices may or may not come from a, from a known supplier. The, the, the applications may run in a cloud. It may be stored in a cloud. So, so now, in securing all that with all this greater you know, threat surface area is, is a bigger challenge for us. We're placing an enormous amount of effort there. Uh, because obviously, for something to be mission critical, it has to be cyber resilient and cyber secure. Otherwise, it's not mission critical enough. It's not at all. It can't yeah. be trusted and relied upon. And yeah, the statistics are, you know, it, uh, there's definitely a lot going on here. Um, our users are seeing, you know, from the last, from I think it's 2010 to 2015, about a 200 plus percent increase in, in, in terrorism. So, you know, the challenges in the world that we have to serve are getting more complex. 25% year on year from 15 to 16 increase in cyber reported incidents. So that's a massive growth by almost anything. And then we're seeing statistics. We have 85% of U.S. government agencies reporting that they've been attacked in a cyber way in some way, shape, or form in the last year. So it's a very important thing we're paying a lot of attention to. Thank you very much for the interview. Much appreciated. Absolutely, Gert. And uh, let's meet up in next year's IWC or somewhere else around the world. Right? Absolutely, Gert. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye. Okay, IWC now exists for 40 years, uh, just, just as we heard from Stephanie this morning. And because of the 40 years, they have a party bash. And these are the drinking tickets. I got two drinking tickets. Um, Let's see what happens inside, because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas probably. Uh, this is how they party in Vegas. Absolutely. So, you want a hat? Yeah. That's good, that's good, that's good for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Welcome in Vegas. Uh -huh.